Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another section of this beauty space while I'm going through a deep declutter. Consider it like a spring cleaning kind of vibe. I have already uploaded a two part eyeshadow palette declutter. If you missed that, I will link it above for you. Also, I've already done some lips. Today, we're gonna get into more of the face products. We're gonna be looking at some face palettes and I might, I think I kind of just want to delve into all things that are of that realm if I have the time. I want to try to go through all of the bronzers, blushes, and highlighters. You guys, that seems very, like as I'm looking at this drawer, it seems a little, I don't know, presumptuous to think I could get through all of that in this video and not have this video be forever long. So we're just gonna kinda go through this as I'm feeling it, but I am in a purge moment. I just wanna get rid of the things that I'm not using, I'm not loving, things that are still good enough that I could pass on to a friend, maybe they're not old or expired. Let's really get into this declutter. Grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy, and get ready to do hopefully a cutthroat declutter with me. Cheers! Before we get into this declutter, I want to thank a longtime supporter of my little channel here, Cupshe. I really appreciate you guys always letting me have a great little sponsor from time to time in my videos that really help support such a small channel like mine. And Cupshe has been an ongoing supporter and I so appreciate that. These dresses are really great for wedding season and it is the time. I don't know about you guys, but all of my friends are either getting married or having bridal showers, baby showers. There's so many things to celebrate and they have now a new like wedding line or big occasion event line so you can pick any type of dress in any range of sizes. This first dress, the Honeymoon Satin Tie Front Dress, I loved the color of, but also I really liked the flowiness of this dress and the slit is actually pretty modest. It can show off some leg, but if you're outside in an event, the wind's not going to take your dress away. I love that. And as you can see on the model, if you are a little bit less busty than me, you may not need anything underneath this dress. I love the cami that I am wearing also from Cupshe. I'll show you about that in just a second here, but I love the flowiness of this whole dress. Next is the Wedding Something Blue Chiffon Maxi Dress. You guys, this gave me all the Marilyn Monroe vibes from the color to the cut of this dress. It was so beautiful. This is something that was super flowy and fun to put on. And again, a very comfortable slit. And the cami that I'm wearing, I'm inserting the footage here. This is from Cupshe as well. This is their Love Ornate bodysuit. And it does have some snaps that you can use to really secure it. But this felt so nice underneath these dresses to make it something that somebody with any body figure can work. Next is the Wedding Romance Leg Silk Midi Dress. This color, I love a teal, I do. So I also loved that the way this laid across my bust because again, I am bustier. I felt like this gave me some coverage, but also it kind of billowed out a little bit at the hips and booty where I tend to, you know, store a little bit of my winter weight still. So I was really excited how well this was cut. I loved the feel of this dress and I felt super duper confident in this. And it felt like the perfect spring summer dress for any big event you may have coming up okay are you having a beach wedding or are you just like a boho babe because this dress is just is screaming your name it screamed my name this is the love crossback lace maxi dress and you guys when i put this on i didn't want to take it off i did not want to it's just got all those boho vibes it is super fluttery i felt like a princess in this dress but like a beach boho princess is that a thing because i could flip the dress around it kind of gave me that it's got some nice heft to it because it has lace on top of it so I really felt like I was doing something when I was turning or making a moment with it. It's a little bit of a dramatic dress. So if you're having a beach wedding or if you're doing a beach event, this could be absolutely perfect. Speaking of those 1950s vibes, this Yours Forever Rose Halter dress is, I mean, doesn't it scream grease? I loved the look of this. Now, I will say putting this on, the fabric is a little thicker than you think it's going to be. So it's actually more sturdy than you would think it is. So definitely feel like when you are maybe washing this, take care to maybe make sure you use a little bit of a softener to make it nice and comfortable on your skin. I love how this is made because I feel like this is going to be great for an indoor or outdoor event. I also just love a good halter moment. 
Next, oh my goodness, this one bow shoulder jumpsuit. I could not get enough of this. This is super sexy, but also it's event appropriate and you feel super dressed up. You feel beautiful. This is an entire outfit in itself. It has the one bow on the side. I love wearing something like this with a pop of color. So I had to pull out my palm leaf earrings and my fun orange handbag. I thought this was super cute. You can also dress this up with a neutral heel or something with color as well. Your hair looks great up or down with this outfit. I feel like this is just such a fun summer event vibe, isn't it? I feel like you could be the bride wearing this, whether it's to your rehearsal dinner or any event you have coming up, or if you're just going out with the girls. This is so cute. I have loved this so darn much. I think it is stunning. Like I said, I'm so grateful that you guys are really cool when I toss in a sponsorship from time to time that support my small channel. And thank you so much to Cupshe for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now, let's get into this declutter. Okay, you guys, what we're looking at here is my, or a big portion of my face products drawer. We've got face palettes back here. We have some highlighters, blushes, bronzers, things have creeped out to the sides here and I'm sure back here somewhere. There's quite a bit to go through here and I'm really gonna be focusing on the things that I either love to use. I'm wanting to focus more on what am I using, what am I loving, what's sparking joy when I open this drawer to want to use it versus the, oh, I don't really like that and I have to sift through so much stuff that maybe isn't my favorite. Let's, okay, where do I start? You know what, let's do the face palettes. Man, oh man, this is gonna be hard. Um, ha, ha, ha. let's see, pulling out, oh gosh, things that I probably don't even remember. This is going to be hard. Oh golly. I've really done no preparation for this. Okay. Ah, uh, oh my golly. Just looking at all of this, I'm a little overwhelmed. And there's also stuff back here. So right on top here, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Italian Summer Face Palette. This is newer to my collection and something I got from a BoxyCharm at the end of last year. But I got a, I don't know, palette shade range that is a little too dark for me. And I really was not impressed with this formula. I'm trying to remember as I'm looking on the back here, if this is even like light, medium, dark, or if this is just how it comes. I just remember not really loving this palette, unfortunately. Oh man, am I gonna have to swatch everything? Uh oh. Um, I just remember not really loving this palette. And a lot of you guys also telling me you are not loving this palette. I'm also not reaching for it. Kind of keep forgetting about it. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I can always reassess at the end if I change my mind, but I'm going to go off first instincts and say, I've not been loving this. I think it was too dark for me. I'm going to pass this on to a friend that could get more use out of this. So one down, first one we're doing. This is Beauty Creations Halley Glow Palette. And this is something I told you guys when I discovered it. It was super like cheap packaging. And I think the retail value on this was really low as well when I first got it. But, 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 I couldn't tell you enough good things about this formula. That they reminded me a lot of the Becca highlighters, right? This was something I was using pretty frequently a couple of years ago. So that's the mindset I have when I look at this going, oh my gosh, I loved this. But I cannot tell you the last time I used this palette. I liked that it had variations for like face, um, this has a little bit more of a rosy shade if I wanted to put it towards like the inner center part of my face and then the darker shades that I like to use when I had more of a tan but also on the body a lot. I will be flat out honest, a lot of face palettes aren't really used much anymore in my beauty space. Um, I know at one point they were. These are super creamy and buttery. Just gonna play a little bit here, do a little swatching. Highlighters are harder to see on camera, they are. The way that my poor, um, you could think you can see these swatches here. I have a weird shadow from my microphone right now. Sorry guys, but I need you to hear me too. <laughs> um, I, it's hard because face palettes for me are just like not something that I'm looking for a lot when I'm getting ready in the mornings. 
But I also think touching some of these things like I have been through my declutters helped me to rediscover stuff I love. This is really beautiful on the skin. It does not show texture. It definitely blends smoothly. I'm mm, at this moment, I'm going to hang on to this. Um, and hopefully after I get done with cleaning out this drawer, I can reorganize some of the things that I want to use more of. Like that's the goal of this is to use the stuff I really like. So I'm going to hang on to this. Okay. I'm just going to say right up front. I still use this face palette. I just said, Oh, I don't reach for face palettes. This one, if we are traveling or if I'm doing an overnight somewhere, or I just need something fast and easy, this one I do think of this one I do use. This is the Tarte clay play palette. I had to double check it because I think there's like two of these. I love this palette quite a bit. As you can see, I've hit pan on it. Use her quite a bit. I know she is gonna stay because she's quality. Using her, keeping her. This might be the oldest face palette I have. Is the Vintage by Jessica Labiskind Duo. And I have talked about this for years because I've had her for years. I got this in my first year on YouTube in a boxy charm and I couldn't believe how good these highlighters were. This is before we were getting stuff like Ofra and all those crazy things and I couldn't get over the formula and how good it was. And that's when I was really getting introduced to highlighters and I've said pretty regularly how great I think these are. But this is really old and aged out and when I touch her now, she doesn't feel as smooth or buttery. She feels more textured, maybe even a tad, I dare I say, I don't wanna say sticky, but grippy. You know where it grips to you in a negative way? I think this is like, I don't know, 2016, 2017? It is time to let her go. And as you can see, I have so much more in my collection now. I feel like that I love and do use that I can let go of an OG in my collection. Sometimes I'm too nostalgic for my own good, but I am gonna let this go because she's, she's expired. I'm knocking over face palettes though because I have too many of them. All right, I hear you guys still talking about this from time to time. This is the Cover FX Your Formula for Beauty Custom Enhancer Palette. Um, she is another highlighting palette. And I, I'm trying to remember if this is something, I think some of you tell me you love it and I think some of you tell me you don't love it and some of you have already decluttered it. I haven't used this in a very long time and I don't think this was ever something that I, oh wow. Did reach for much. Um, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera because of the previous swatchings I've done, but I think we've got some hard pan going on here because it is not, I'm digging. So after I did some digging, she swatches. I just don't use her. And let's be real, highlighters are, they had their huge moment. Um, oh my gosh. When I think of highlighting, that highlighting moment, I think of like influencers like Jacqueline Hill. I think of Carly Bible. I think of specific people and specific products. Um, I, uh, highlighting is not the big jam that it used to be. Highlighting used to be that frosting on the end of the makeup look that we were all obsessed with. And if we weren't glowing to the gods, then we felt like we couldn't leave the house there for a brief amount of time. Oh, maybe it wasn't as brief because I have a lot of highlighters as you're gonna see today. Ah, oh, golly, I my instinct is to say, I'm not using this, I'm gonna declutter it. And I know there's gonna be some people in the audience that are like, that is one of my favorites because I feel like this is some people's favorites. I'm not using it as much. So if I can, since it is still swatching pretty well, what I might do is see if I've got a friend who would really love this. Oh. This one is giving me some thoughts though. Oh, I'm swatched all over it. This one is making me feel like though, I don't know, I, like I said, I may go, may sort through stuff at the end, but right now that's my instinct. All right, the Pretty Vulgar Nesting Bee Face. This is a palette from Pretty Vulgar that I, well, from BoxyCharm, but it's from, made by Pretty Vulgar that I got. And I used it for a little bit there. And I think some people truly loved it because I would still hear about it in my comments from time to time. I am not somebody who has reached for this as much as I thought I would. I did have its moment with me and I liked the highlighter and I liked some of the bronzers, uh, but I'm not using it. So I'm gonna declutter this as well. Ooh, I'm a little bit more on a roll than I thought I would be. This is the Ace Beauté Glow Essentials Highlighting Palette. This has a lot of options and this actually looks really pretty for like a summer glow, especially with these deeper tones that would look good on the body, on the face. Let me do a little bit of swatching. Although I can't tell you the last, whoa, last time I used this. Um, these kind of palettes too could be beautiful on the eyes. It's not something I've done, but it's something uh, you could do. And just because I may declutter something doesn't mean it's bad. It just may mean I don't use it and I have too much. I'm someone who really likes to, you know, 
keep my collection as clean and clutter free as possible. <sighs> These are really pretty though and very, very pigmented. I almost wonder if they're too dark and that's maybe why I've not been reaching for it. I'm gonna put this in the declutter pile, not because it's not beautiful, like I said, but because if I'm not using it, I, I have excessive amounts in here, as you see. So I'm gonna put this in the declutter pile and if I have to reassess at the end, I will. I'm gonna stop saying that though because I'm just gonna keep saying it. All right, so this is the Ofra Mini Mix Palette. This is all blushes. And some people really, really love the Ofra formula for a lot of different things. And blushes is definitely something I personally believe they are known for. I really more know them, honestly, for highlighters, but a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that blush highlighter is to die for. I don't reach for it that much. Uh, personal preference, I know, please don't hate me because I know some people really love this and I, I get you, everybody's got different things. And it's not that this is bad, it's just it's not top of mind because palettes for me kind of aren't top of mind as much as I would like them to be. Hmm, I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. I wanna see how I do because I do reach for it from time to time when I remember it. I just don't always remember it. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Oh my goodness, the Ofra Madison Miller palette. Have I had her since when I was with Ipsy originally? And I remember really enjoying this palette. Oh, that shadow is frustrating me. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, I haven't touched this though in so long. She's really pretty though. Two highlighters and a blush. Oh, the blush does not feel as, well, this is older. The blush isn't feeling as smooth. It feels a little bit more gritty. But again, we're not using highlighters like this anymore where they are just like the showstopper. And I feel like what I'm looking at here for these highlighters from Ofra is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of, there's only so much you can do, right? There's only so many colors. There's only so many formulas. And I've got a ton as you're gonna see in here. All right, let's think here, let's think here. Sometimes you gotta look at the collection as a whole. And this right here is my Ofra On The Glow palette. So I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you gotta see more of what's in your collection before you can make informed decisions. I am going to be keeping this down here from Ofra. And there are some beautiful highlighters in here. Even this piece down here that has a lot of variety of colors along with two of the major staples, the bronzers, the blushes, stuff like that. I'm keeping this, she's great. And this is something I have used quite a bit. And this has even won awards in my BoxyCharm Awards and Year End Awards with you guys, the On The Glow Ofra palette. This is staying, put her up there. So I'm gonna say I can go ahead and get rid of this. She got a lot of use, as you can see, there's a good old size dip in there, but I don't need to just keep hoarding stuff because I used it a lot at once upon a time, but I don't touch it anymore. This is your sign. If you have stuff in your collection that you're like, oh, I used to love this, but I got new stuff and I haven't used this in a long time. It's okay to let it go. You don't have to store it. It doesn't have to be a tomb. Your beauty room does not have to be a tomb to old stuff that you used to like. This, okay, so more Ofra. This is the good to go. Yeah, good to go mini mix palette. <sighs> eyeshadows. So I don't think their eyeshadows are that great, at least compared to some other formulas that I love for me personally. But again, we have that multi-faceted highlighter in there and we also have a bronzer and a blush. What am I thinking? I feel like the same blush that they kind of give out a lot is in here. So that might make me feel better about getting rid of that other blush. I'm gonna hang on to this. I have still used this in the summertime specifically as like a summer palette, like if I'm traveling or on the go, so I'm gonna still hang on to this. All right, okay, Iconic London. Just literally got this. You guys saw me try this on the lips. You guys saw me try this on the face in some recent videos. And this formula is not my jam, but I'm also not really a lover of cream products to a huge degree. I will try them. I will try new formulas if I am sent them or if I, you know, get excited about them because I have purchased some on my own as well. Uh, this just did not work for me with my big pores and bossy skin. I, I'm not loving this. So I'm going to let myself give this to someone else who would probably like it so much more than me because it is brand new. So I'm going to give this to a friend. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7 decluttered so far. I think we're doing pretty good, right? I'm, I'm accepting this as good. All right, do I have any more palettes down here? Hold on. I thought I had a couple other sneaky ones down here in this bottom drawer. All right, so 
I got this like two, three years ago from BoxyCharm. This is the True and Luscious Lucky Glow Palette. Um, it did come a little broken, so that's why you see a ton of pan there, but this is something I loved to use on the body. I would use this pretty much as an all body palette. Some of you guys reached out to me and said, hey, did you ever get this palette? I love using this palette and it's got huge pans in it. Yes, this is actually really good. But as you see, it's in that bottom drawer with my big eyeshadow palettes. So I can tell you, I have not touched her in a very long time. And because I have so much and the one shade I used up a bunch is pretty much almost gone, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this palette as well. I don't reach for it. I haven't even looked for it in probably a year. So this is okay to let it go. Okay. Ace Beauté. I don't know if I said I decluttered this yet and just hadn't yet. This is that dark palette. This is the Ultimate Sculpting Face Palette we just got. And it did show up that this is the only shade that they have, like the only shade range they have. And every one of every skin tone has kind of dabbled in it and tried it. For me, I'm not a cream person. I just said that. And I know this is going to be too dark for me to want to use ongoing. It's kind of got a couple strikes against it for me and the way I prefer to do makeup. So I'm just going to pass this along as well. Still in the box. Haven't touched it. Would rather donate it if possible to like a women's shelter. Actually, if you are in the Tampa Bay area and you have have a place that you love to donate unused makeup to please let me know because I'm still on the hunt for one I keep reaching out to companies but they don't get back to me okay back to this drawer here we do have a few more little palettes in here this is the Glodent makeup palette from touch and soul I adore this palette and I did not think that I would this is an all shimmer face palette and we are talking about like deep tones here for contouring or bronzing up the face more rosy shades that I've even used as a blush no kidding and not in 2017 like more recently highlighters that are gorgeous this formula shocked the snot out of all of us I don't even know how else to say it it shocked all of us we couldn't believe that we liked a shimmery palette because I mean how many people like a shimmer bronzer regularly not a ton I was more open to it because of other products I had tried but this is so smooth does not put texture on my face so amazing love it she is staying with me because I use her oh boy this one's gonna be hard because I forget about this and it's probably because I got the mini for Christmas this is a Charlotte Tilbury I mean you have to be fancy when you say her name don't you Charlotte Tilbury the film star bronze and glow palette if I could get her open okay so I have to tell you the truth. I asked for a mini for Christmas a year ago, not 2022 Christmas, but 2021 Christmas um, from Adam because I was like, I've never tried anything from Charlotte Tilbury and I wanna try it. I wanna be excited about it. And I talked about it, I think when I first got it and then never again. Not because it's bad, but because I was just, and maybe it's cause drugstore you know, makeup has increased value and quality so much. I just was not, like wowed I was like okay this is fine what else I got and then I would just it didn't even stand out to me as something to use on the regular it's not bad it's just not as wowy as I thought it should be I mean it's smooth it looks smooth in those swatches it looks smooth on my hand it looks smooth in person I just have other stuff too that is as good um, but now that I'm cleaning out the mess, you know, like cleaning out all of those big palettes, cleaning out and seeing what I would really like to use. I am, I just looked at the swatch. I felt it on my hand. It feels really smooth and buttery. I want to try using this now because I'm not too tan right now. I'm at a good shade range for this palette and I want to see how it compares to stuff I cannot stop touching, which we'll get to those in a second. Um, and see is this worth it and maybe do another declutter in the future or give you an update in a faves and fails and be like yes this is so good maybe the mini is worth your money I'm glad I didn't buy the big version though I'm glad I got the mini because I, I've definitely not been reaching for it and I've had it a year and like what a year and four months okay I think we have all the face palettes out of the way hot diggity dang I did not think we would get through them that quickly I'm being ruthless today Okay, this is where it might get a little harder. So we have highlighters, blushes, bronzers, and then there's more on the outskirts over here. All right, let's talk about the one that I may, dang it. So, okay, I've already said in this video, highlighters are not what they used to be, where it was like the standout thing you had to have in your collection. And yes, 
I have some that have so much pan on them because this is like the Becca Champagne Pop. This is an OG. This is so good. And I got to this amount of pan so darn quickly because I fell in love with it. One of you guys sent it to me and I couldn't stop reaching for it, putting it on the body. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to swatch things on my hand right now because I have so many highlighters on my hand. So buttery, so great. And yes, I can already hear you guys typing in the comments, which I love when you do that. This is definitely still on the market, just not under the solo Becca name. Smashbox bought it, and I think they are still saying like Smashbox Becca because, you know, that works great for marketing. They still have this formula. It still exists. I did, um, when I knew they were going out of business, but before the Smashbox stuff was announced, I bought a bunch. I have Opal here that is really pretty and something I like when I'm wanting a cooler moment on a highlighting realm, super buttery, super great. I wanted all the ones that I'd never tried. And then I also have stuff that I got from like subscription box pop-ups that are combinations that you can't buy anymore. Like this one has bronzers, blushes, highlighters in it. This one is called the Sunset Waves. I use this less, but it's actually more used for me in the summer because it is deeper toned and that's when it works better for me. And then I have some one-offs here. This was um, Dreamsicle. This is something I also love to use in the spring and summer. It's got more of that orangey cream pink tone to it that's really pretty. Also looks good on the eyes as well. I'm not saying I don't have stuff that could be competing in coloration, but formula-wise, still performing and pretty. Shoot, so that's why I'm almost like, highlighters, it feels so weird right now because I feel like we're in this weird limbo with highlighters. Yes, I still touch into them from time to time and put them on my face, but I still have such a quality collection that I don't know if I'm willing to get rid of them because what's old is new again. Blushes right now are back in the jam. When I started my channel, blushes were not a big vibe at the moment. It was more bronzers and highlighters, and now we're into the blush phase. So eventually, what's old is new again. You know what I'm saying? We'll go back around and highlighters will be a thing again, and I've always loved this formula. Will they still be good by then? Hopefully so, but um, I have quite a bit. Actually, now I'm looking at this. This is Ofra, this is not Becca, and this is Pillow Talk. And this is in the newer component, so it's that big bulky packaging. And do I still have that? Hold on. Let me pull out the big guy here. Is Pillow Talk in here or no? That's what I'm looking to see. Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think Pillow Talk is in here. And I'm looking on the back here. California Dream Triangle, Blissful Highlighter, Rodeo Drive. I have Rodeo Drive coming out of my nose, but I'm not sorry because that's a good one. Maybe I don't have it. Okay, so all the lights is the highlighting powder in here is called All the Lights. I think this may be that. Let's see. Sometimes this is what you gotta do. Mm, they look pretty similar, don't they? Yeah, I think that's the same highlighter. I'm like swatching all over my hands. I'm gonna be like a glowing Tinkerbell fairy after this video. <laughs> it's fine, I'm good with it. Um, But am I gonna reach for a palette as a single? Okay, let's just see here. I'm gonna hang on to Oh, this is an OG. This was my first. This was my first Ofra highlighter ever. And this is in Rodeo Drive. And yes, I do have that in those bigger palettes quite a bit. This is so old too. This is like, the, this is the first highlighter I ever received from BoxyCharm, I think. If it's not the first, it's the second. Cause that Vintage by Jessica Labiskin palette may have actually been the first. This may have been the second where I learned like what a skin tone highlighter could look like and how just enhanced, how great this formula was. I, that's the first introduction I had. But this is 2016, 2017, beginning of 2017. How many years ago is that now? It was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, six years old and I already have it. Maybe I should let her go make some space in here because I do have those in here as we've just discussed. And I'm clearly not wanting for highlighters if I'm not gonna be getting rid of any of these Becca's. Let me see, are all of these the same? What's this? This one's Prosecco Pop, it is a bit darker. This one here is Moonstone, and Moonstone is a lot lighter. I have a full size Rodeo Drive right here, so I don't need two, this one is obviously newer. Gonna let that old one go, even though that one hurts a little bit to my soul. 
Um, I am gonna go ahead though and declutter this Aesthetica highlighter. This one is in this shade Starlet and it is pretty and if I would have received this, oh, it feels a little gritty or grippy compared to what I'm used to with Becca and Ofra. This one is more of an iridescent -y tone. If I would have got this in 2017, 2016, I would have thought it was so cool, but it is gripping to some texture a little bit on my skin and it has more of like that purple undertone that it, for me is not kind of what I'm going for, but it is pretty. I didn't get this too long ago, so I'm gonna see if I have someone in my life who would like this. I'm gonna let this go. I will not be letting go of the Laura Mercier. This is the Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Highlight 01. This is really quality. This is something I love to use on natural days when I want just a touch of glow. This looks great on the face. This looks great on the body. Keeping her. Also, I, I need to feel this. Let me wash off some of these swatches. And I need to see how I feel still about this Steve Laurent Jelly Highlighter. This is so good. At least it is when it's fresh. So I need to feel it. Um, it's something I love to use personally in the summertime when I have a little bit more color to me. And this is such a fascinating formula. It's in the shade Prosecco Please. And it is like this jelly wet formula. But it does not cling to texture. It doesn't make my face look like I've got a million pores on it. It is such a great tone that just kind of makes your skin look like it's wet and juicy, not like that 2017 highlighter in a way where it's like it's its own moment. It blends well into your skin. I almost want to see if they have one that's a little bit lighter that I can use when I'm not super tan because I do feel like once I'm too pale for it, it doesn't look right on my skin. But I hope you can see like this whole little swatch here on my skin on the camera. I can see it in person where it just makes your skin look glowy juicy it's that j-lo glow without having to spend the high retail on her products it looks great on the skin so definitely going to keep this and i'm maybe even look to see if they have something a little bit lighter i can use in other times of the year so pretty but i do tend to reach for this mostly in summer because that's when i want that sexy wet beach look personally and what do we have here this is seen from space 1b and this is from oh this is one of those indie brands and I really liked this highlighter that definitely has those ColourPop vibes, right? Because of the um, pot. Oh, is this the same color almost as the Steve Laurent? A mm, little bit more golden toned, a little less because the Steve Laurent is a bit deeper brown toned, whereas I would say this is a lighter tone. Is it essentially what I was asking for this to be right now? Maybe. Let me see here. Hmm. Definitely gives that wet look. Looks like it's blending in smoothly. Have I reached for this? No, because I didn't even remember what I was playing with. But now I'm just going to sit here and mess with it a second. I feel like summer in the new way makeup is going is like the moment that if you're going to do some highlighters, you, this is when you would do it is when it starts to warm up. And it has been in the 80s and sometimes 90s here in the Tampa Bay area. So now would be when I would start to pull some of these types of makeup products out. And this definitely is still performing. It still definitely looks nice. I think I've definitely used this on the collarbones as well and like on the shoulders just for like that juiced up moment without having to get out a whole bottle of like this kind of product that pumps out that I used this morning on my shoulders. This would be so much easier and not get everywhere. So I am gonna rediscover this, I think. And if I end up doing a declutter in the future, I will, but this is looking pretty nice. It's performing well too. And it's a weird one-off product. It's from Space Case Cosmetics. So do you guys remember this from BoxyCharm? Because I did not, but it's performing. And that's why I'm doing this. I want to see what's in my collection that I used to love that I want to rediscover. And what what is that something I don't? Um, all right, so we got some Merit over here. Oh, yeah. I remember loving the bronzers, but how did I feel about... Is this a highlighter too? Yes. They're highlighters. I got two shades here, one in the shade Bounce, one in the shade Kava. This was not pulling to my texture. This is something that I definitely was putting in the rotation for the natural days, along with some of the bronzers that I have been liking and using for either a contour or a bronzer, and this is like that highlight for a natural day. 
I'm going to hang on to these because they are pretty new to my collection and I did like them. I'm not a huge cream girl. I keep saying those things, but these are a little bit more approachable for me. I think the stick formula helps and the fact that I have seen these in action and they don't deter makeup on my face. So I'll hang on to these for a while and see how I use them this summer. But if I don't use them, I will, like I said, do a follow up. But now they're over here where I can actually see them with them rather than things be all over the place. So, oh, is there another face palette hidden in here? Holy crap. There's another face palette hidden in here. We thought we were doing so good. This is the midi face palette. This is in medium from Ofra. And here I thought I was doing so good. Well, I am doing good. We're going to give ourselves credit. So we have San Fran here, Rodeo Drive. Again, more Rodeo Drive. I was just worried I didn't have any. And Pacifica. I forgot all about this, but this definitely looks dark for me. So the fact I forgot about this tells you I've not been using it. The question, do I need to rediscover it? Oh, and this here looks like a shimmery bronzer. Let me clean off my fingers. That's a shimmery bronzer for sure. This is a matte bronzer. All right, I wanna play with this some more because I don't remember this. I do not remember this at all. This matte bronzer looks pretty good and the shimmery bronzer is definitely standing out to me. I'm hoping you can see it and that the camera's focusing. It's hard for me to tell but these look pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is put this back in the rotation, but now that I'm gonna have some room, hopefully, I'm gonna organize this so much better and put this in the bronzer space. So we're gonna stick her over here for the moment. You guys still interested? Take a drink, halfway through. I'm gonna try to pick this up a little bit for speed and time. Holy cow, I forgot about these. These are the Rodile blush drops. I actually just got some more blush drops apparently from Drug Elephant and I didn't realize at first that's what they were. I have not reached for these. These were probably just meh for me when I received it, but totally forgot about it. So declutter. I'm not a big drops creamy person. We've talked about this. I probably don't need to keep repeating that. Another one that I know I'm gonna go ahead and declutter is from the AOA line. This is from Shop Miss A. This is their Lumi blush. I actually like this type of baked blush. And I thought this did pretty good, but for where my skin is at, I think this showed too much of my big bossy pores on it. Not all baked blushes do that, but this one does a little bit for me. And I find myself when I do reach for it going, oh shoot, I forgot this is the one baked blush that doesn't work as great with my personal skin type. But I do love a lot of the AOA Shop Miss A line. It's like a dollar to $2 and super, super affordable and great quality. But this one in particular isn't working for my skin type, so she's going. Speaking of, this is the Ciate London baked blush. This one is a marble blush. Um, it's dusk. I really like this. This one is a little bit similar to that style, but it's, it's smooth so much better on my skin. It looks great. Couldn't find her because she was under stuff I didn't like. So she's going back on top here. Also from Shop Miss A, the AOA Perfect Blush. This is a tiny little muffin. I think she's only a dollar. The shade I have here is Dandy. It's a little bit more of a corally tone. It's something I really like for spring. I have popped into this one quite a bit. I think she is really pretty, really nice, spreads beautifully. Definitely gonna be keeping this one. Don't sleep on Shop Miss A. Just because the products are cheaper, don't think that doesn't mean they're not quality because there's some good stuff in there. Speaking of, I just got two of these Essence blushes and they're not my favorite as much as they are for some other people on YouTube. The ones I got here are Befitting and Bespoke. I'm gonna keep these though so I can use them more through the spring and see how I like using them compared to the stuff I'm gonna keep and compare it to. It's not bad formula. It's just something that I'm still kind of working with. So I'm gonna put her back in here. Who still has this note blush? Who still has this desert rose? And it's something I got from a boxy charm. She's got some pigment to her. She's papau, but she blends really well. I have a lot of friends on here that love blush. This is like your jam, right? Like I'm speaking your language with this whole section, even before blush came back into the trend of makeup. And so many people were like, this is so darn good. It actually shocked us because a lot of us didn't know who this brand was. I use her pretty regularly still to this day. Definitely keeping this one. Um, this is why I need to do this. All right, this is old. This is old, but I use this today because it's that good. This is the Studio Makeup Luminous Loose Blush. You guys, if you still have this, yes, it still works. Well, mine still works amazingly like a champ. This blush, 
I may never run out of this. Like if I'm still doing YouTube in, I don't know, five, 10 years, like this will still be here because you only need a little bit, a little bit will do ya, but it spreads so beautifully on the cheeks. It has a little bit of that luminous property to it, which is in the name, but it's not shimmery. It just makes the makeup glide on your face. And it doesn't matter if you have dry skin, oily skin, big poured skin like me, it works so dreamy. This is something I've not been able to ever duplicate with any other formula and she stays, she stays, she stays. Let's talk about the Merit blush. This is Beverly Hills. This is another one that I tend to just use the Merit products either together or when I'm also doing another natural day with tinted moisturizers, barely there makeup styles. And this is a blush that works well for that. Um, I do think this makes me look a little shiny and I, I think I'm going to hang on to this, but I'll see how this ends up working out because this one would be the one that's closer to the chopping block. Um, I haven't used it in a little bit, so I do want to try to use it a little bit for spring, summer to really rediscover and see how I feel, but we'll see as how the rest of this goes. This iconic London blush, this is a liquid blush that I even said last year when I was reviewing it, I was surprised I liked it so much, but then... I didn't really use it much past, I don't know, a month maybe. And it's, again, it's a process situation. I not only go to powders because it's what I'm familiar with and it's what I think works best for my skin type, but it's also the way I approach makeup in the mornings. I tend to do face makeup first and I go straight after doing the foundations and concealers, going straight to powder because I don't want anything to crease. And that's when I should be popping on something like this to blush up the face with these type of products. But because it's not top of mind for me, oh, I'm making a mess. I don't think to do it. But this one I actually was pretty impressed with, thought it did really well, did not disturb my makeup. This is the Iconic London Sheer Blush. I have to look up the name because I just got blush all over it. But it actually works really well. So if you are someone who likes a liquid blush or a cream blush and want to try something, this Iconic London one is really good. It's to the point that I didn't declutter it and I did declutter other liquid blushes last year. I'm sitting here trying to decide because the swatch does look so dang clean. It looks so good. You see the pigment, but it also looks very smooth on the skin. And I remember giving that review for it as well. Do I want to try to use it since summers when I do tend to be a little bit more minimal with the makeup on the day to day basis and do something a little bit more easy breezy? It looks good. I'm going to keep it here for the moment. Um, I feel kind of the same way about this youth euphoria and you if you may be looking at this going girl you left one of your lip glosses or lip products in your drawer no this is a blush did a whole video on it comes out green and then as it touches your skin it starts turning pink can you see this can you see this it starts turning pink i actually really liked it and was shocked by how much i liked it because I was like, this is not going to work well. And it ended up working really stinking well. I couldn't believe it. Um, oh, look at this. It's, it's, it's getting even more. Can you see this pinkness? Can you see this rosiness? This is witchcraft, right? This is how makeup can just be fun sometimes. Um, but I haven't reached for it since then. But it is again, that because I've been doing a lot more of the makeup makeup looks. Look at that. Look how bold that can get. <laughs> I'm so amused right now. So amused. All right, I'm going to stick this in here with the Iconic London next to these. So maybe they're a little bit more in the front focus for me to not forget. Look how pigmented this is. This is like a Barbie blush. You guys go into the Barbie movie because you could wear this if you have it. You could wear this. All right, what do we have here? Oh, Laura Geller. Okay, so this is a baked blush that works really well. This is the Baked Blush in Brighton. This is in Tropic Hues. This is something that works really well, even if you have oily skin or bossy pores. It works beautifully displays gorgeously on the skin. I don't know if I have anywhere on my body that I haven't swatched, but it's so beautiful. I like to use it with a tapered fluffy brush and it looks great on the face, especially if you're wanting a little bit of that illumination come the warmer months. She's staying. Kosas. So I dip into this from time to time. Um, this is the Papaya 1972. Um, when we got this, I was confused because this is supposed to be a highlighter blush combo. And I was like, this isn't really more of like another blush. 
it doesn't even really have an illumination. It's a little bit more of a matte product. A little confused by it. But I have used both of these as a blush and actually really enjoyed them. And that is what has kept this little confusing baby in my collection. And I have recently-ish used her. So we're going to put her here. All right, let's see here. Okay. I was wondering, actually, I'm going to do a swatch off right now. This is the NYX Sweet Cheeks Matte Blush. And this is in the shade summer breeze this kind of looks like a little bit if i have put this on my nose and face this kind of makes me look like i have a little bit of a suntan uh no it's not suntan this makes me look like i have a little bit of a sun burn and i know that was like a trend for a hot second is it still i don't know but i feel like if i wanted to do that the note blush could do that for me and i don't necessarily need both because they're both matte so i kind of need to make a decision Ooh, this is so much smoother why is the note smoother when it's older someone explain this math to me so i wouldn't say they're like exact dupes but they're so close that when they're on your face let's see Ooh, this one is deeper dang they are more different than i thought but you could build this up to be the same as that Whew, and I don't really need both of them in my collection. Half of my brain says this is older. You should get rid of this since this is newer. And then if I'm doing reviews, you could probably pick this up. Whereas this, I don't know if you can anymore. That's where my brain goes when you do YouTube. My instinct was to keep the note and get rid of the NYX blush because I tend to like this a bit better. So I think I'll do that for now. I think that's what I will plan to do. And I have an hourglass blush here. This is the Ambient Diffused Heat Blush. This is something I loved a ton, a ton. This actually, I think, even won a Shimmer Award and a BoxyCharm Awards. I still use this from time to time, so I will keep her. Oh, this is the one I wanted to get rid of. Did I still want to get rid of this? This is the AOA Wonder Baked I think they call this an eyeshadow, um, but it's broken in here um, in the shade Creamsicle. This one was too shimmery for face and didn't work well on the eyes. I can't get it open. And it broke off here, as you can see, um, too shimmery. Yeah, I'm just going to toss this. It's already, yeah. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, and I'm still going to get rid of this. So this is a way more approachable. Oh, wow. Look at this. I even have room to grow. In my blush category, holy cow. Of course, right now I'm questioning everything. I'm going, well, then should I keep this and really do a swatch off since it's not over packed and overwhelming anymore? Maybe I will just because I want to know what actually I like better in a try on face off kind of thing. Let's come over here to bronzers. Um, oh, shoot. There's actually more highlighters hidden back here that I forgot to do over here. Oh, this blush too. Oh my gosh, I'm a mess. Let's back up just a second to talk about some highlighters. I've had this in my collection forever. This is the Revolution Triple Baked Highlighter Faith of the Gods. Look how much is in here. I will never use this up. And I used this for days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months ongoing. It's so pretty, but I haven't touched it in a long... Oh my gosh. This is why sometimes touching things is a bad idea because... Oh my God. Look at that. Ice. Freaking ice. When 2017 highlighters were a thing, it was a big deal. You couldn't buy this anymore. So this was like, I was coveting it, but the packaging is such a pain in the butt because it, obviously this isn't gonna fit like, oh, I just said it's not gonna fit and then it fit. <laughs> it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Ooh, actually, does this look like Moonstone? Hold on, hold, hold, hold please. Where's Moonstone? Mm, Moonstone's a bit more golden. What's this one? This is Opal, maybe I'm thinking of Opal. Ooh, Opal? Maybe opal's close to it. I don't know. Let's see here. No, that one's going more into the skin tones as well. I am literally going to look like the Tin Man. This video is over. Dang, there is literally nothing to compare it to. I'm going to think for a second. And I also forgot I had two Natasha Denona glows over here. And see, I think I make progress and then I have to jump back. This I've already hit pan on. Can you see this little bit of pan? This is the Natasha Denona All Over Glow and this is O2 Medium. I tend to use this one even more than the O1 Light because I love the way that it looks a little bit more like a glowy goddess on the face. It doesn't look like intentional highlighter, like it's that blingy highlighter. It looks more natural. It also looks great on the shoulders, collarbones, anywhere else you wanna put something with a little extra zhuzh. This has been a highlighter I have loved for years and years. I, I can't swatch any more highlighters, guys, because I'm covered. This is staying. All right, 
This is 01. I almost get disappointed sometimes when I grab this instead of the 02 because this one is great too. I'm just being picky. This one is a lot like the Laura Mercier Baked Matte Glow. This is, this is very similar to that, but it's still got its own unique properties to it. Still really good. I'm gonna keep her. So the question is, what do I do about you? Because you're so unique and nobody can buy you anymore. Look at that. Look at that. But what do I do with it? What am I doing with this? What am I doing with my life? I just don't think I can get rid of it yet because it's so unique and I don't have anything else like it, right? She goes through her collection to see. Finger swatch here. Finger swatch here. Okay, we're not too far off with that one. Do finger swatch here. Whoo! Finger swatch here. Okay. Okay, we're not too far off. This first one here is this. We're not terribly far off. And the thing is, is I'm not reaching for this. Why, why, what is wrong with me? Why am I like this? I don't want to get rid of it and have regrets. I don't want any regrets. You know what I mean? And yeah, I know the words regrets, but I'm funny. When in doubt, I'm not gonna, if I have to ponder it this much, then clearly it means something to me. So it sparks joy. I'm hanging on to it. Also for blushes, before we get into the bronzers, this is a Natasha Denona blush duo. This one actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, does she look like the Kosas? Let's talk a minute. Let's, let's, the blush for Natasha isn't exactly my favorite. Okay, you could see how they have resemblances, but they're not the same. Okay, honestly, this is a little bit deeper and I tend to only go to that in the summer, summer when I have a lot of color. I think now we're finally past these and we're gonna be going over here into the bronzers. This is getting really long. All right, coming up to the front. I have had this for a while. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Y'all, I forget I have this. I know this used to be a favorite of mine back in the day and I thought if I just have the small one, maybe it'll be fine and then I can just use that. I don't even use it. So I'm gonna declutter it and if I wanna get another one again, I will. But Because they're cruelty free again. Yeah, 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 but for a long time they weren't. So I'm gonna get rid of this. This is something I liked for a while. This is something from the brand called Sugar. This is the Contour de Force. I was surprised at how much I really enjoyed this tiny little bronzer. I took it with me traveling. I think I had it in like a makeup kit to go in the car for easy touch-ups and stuff. And I think that's how this has stayed in my collection for so long, but I'm not using it. So I gotta declutter her. Tiate London. Um, this is a bronzer I think I got in the summer of last year from a BoxyCharm. This is the shade South Beach. And I was pretty bummed because it's so dark. We went through this phase like usual with a subscription box where you can get an influx of the same product over and over. So you have a lot to compare and contrast to. And this has such a red undertone to it. I had to take such a light hand, but I really was interested in the formula because it is like a shimmery bronzer, but it was something that I just don't think I was loving. I haven't touched it in quite a while because I have some that I really like. Ooh, I can actually see the sparkles on that actually. So dang it. Do I want to rediscover this and see how I feel? You can definitely see how she's very pigmented. Like as soon as you put it on there, you have to kind of diffuse it down. I'm gonna give this another try. Now that I get to rediscover things and kind of being more aware of what's in my collection, I'm gonna try this again and see how I feel. Maybe I love this more than I can remember, honestly. I don't know. I did really, really love this Bronze Noir from Viseart. This is an interesting little component, right? This is a matte kind of a cooler toned bronzer. This is something I really, really liked and I still do use this. I reach for it pretty decently. This weird mirror thing makes it like okay for travel, I guess, but kind of weird when you're just using it in your beauty space on the daily. But I liked the formula. I thought it was super blendable, super easy. I love their shadows. Hanging on to this. All right, let's get into some of the harder stuff here. This is Vessa. The packaging component looks nasty because it is. <laughs> it's one of those components that grabs onto things. And this is just too too dark for me. I think I was able to make it work a few times. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm not mad about it. It's got brown. It's got this like creaminess to it. It's a little bit deeper than I need. I have not been reaching for this and I haven't reached for it in quite some time, honestly. Man, I'm trying to remember what this one was like. I'm going to get a brush. I don't have any super clean bronzer brushes at the moment, but I'm actually going to right now on camera just 
put this on a little bit. All right, this is actually looking pretty good on the skin. I just tried it on the skin off frame. Unfortunately, my camera's already set up and it just takes too much to go back and forth. This actually does not look bad. So I thought I was gonna declutter this, but now I'm really gonna really be investigating what's in my collection and try this again. But I do wanna just declutter, where is it? I need to get rid of it while I'm thinking about it. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Rich Amber powder bronzer look how dark this is like the swatches online what they were showing us online when we were picking our choice items for boxycharm did not look like this this was part of the anastasia takeover and i thought maybe i could use it as a contour or something i'm not using this or when i try to i'm always disappointed it's too deep it's too dark for me so i'm going to get rid of this and the component's pretty chunky so she's taken up some real estate also gonna go ahead, I think, and get rid of this Wet n Wild. I just recently, I feel like, brought this back into my collection once Wet n Wild was 100% cruelty free. I This is the Sunset Strip Tease Bronzer, and I didn't realize that this was their shimmery bronzer. It's on my shoulders today. I don't like it on my face. I've tried it several times on my face since repurchasing this, and it grabs to my texture. It makes my pores look massive. Um, and then I just transitioned it to a body glow for shoulders, you know, collarbones and stuff but I have so many things as you've seen in this collection that I don't need that. So I'm gonna get rid of this and see if I can find their matte version that I used to love. And I thought that's what this was originally when I picked it up, didn't, cause there's nowhere on the packaging that it says glowy or shimmery bronzer. So gonna be getting rid of this. These are the two Too Faced bronzers. This one is the, you can't buy it anymore, Chocolate Gold Soleil, look, Soleil, Soleil. Look at how much pan I have on this. I already have a backup because one of you guys was awesome and sent it to me when you realized I was gonna be out soon and I was panicking because I can't find it anywhere. It's discontinued. I'm so heartbroken about that. This is the matte version. This is just the Chocolate Soleil bronzer and it's really good. I like this. There's not as much, there's no pan on it obviously, but I do use this pretty decently I would say. So I'm gonna hang on to her as well. Really good formulas. But this one, I mean this one still looks so good on my skin. I've bought this years ago. This is the matte bronzing veil in Desert Days from Kevin Aquan. I was so excited to get something that was Kevin Aquan. It was something I was hearing, you know, Tati Westbrook, the glam life guru talk about for so long was Kevin Aquan and all of these WTF like amazing products. This is something I haven't reached for in a long time. I think it's just too pale for me. I used to have to sit and build this up and build this up. And luckily because the formula is so creamy and buttery, it, it worked well. And I can't say I haven't touched this in years, but I will say I haven't touched it in a pretty long time simply because because it is so fair and you just really have to build it up uh, at least I do on my skin and it's not that it's a bad formula I just kind of wish I had something that's a little bit darker but when you know when you're shopping at Marshall's and you see you know a brand that you really want to try and this is your only option you roll with it right and you're like this is a steal so I love it and even just sitting here swatching on my hand I'm like oh I bet I could make this work but it's so fair and I've not been touching it I think I just need to let this go, which I never thought, ugh, I'm feeling a certain kind of way about that. Uh, I, I kind of feel a little bad about it because this is something I've liked a lot. The formula is great, but I'm not using it. And I think I could use a deeper shade. So I'm just gonna commit, 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 keep moving. These are the two cream bronzers from Merit. This one is in the shade Quince and this one is in the shade Clay. I actually liked these more than I thought. These two creamy bronzers were what was getting me to actually remember to use creams in the mornings and use this after I put on a foundation to carve out some cheekbones very naturally, do a little bit of a warm up to the face. This looks really natural and good on the skin, so I am gonna be hanging on to these. If I do something like this on a natural day, it'll also remind, help me to remember to use some of these, you know, creamy blushes that I do want to discover more of. Speaking of here, this is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. So many people were raving about this last summer and my stores were sold out every time I tried. Then I found it finally. I got the shade, is it Tan Lines? Tan Lines, yeah. And I actually liked this, but I don't find myself reaching for it ever. And it's kind of hit or miss whether or not it looks good on me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it along. I can make it look good if I work with it. But as I've just said, I have a lot of products that I don't have to really work for it. And I'm not using this as much as I was hoping. So I'll pass this on. What I do love a lot are some things I've repurchased back into my beauty space and something that I got from a subscription box that is so much pan. This is the number seven maple bronzer. And I believe the number seven line at the drugstore is what is really compared a lot 
to the Charlotte Tilbury formula, right? And maybe that's why this was a little less impressive for me with their bronzer because I have a bronzer in here that I've loved for years that is super, um, I would, the word coming to mind is mellow. It's super easy to apply. It doesn't apply super opaque or crazy that you can layer it up. This looks super natural on the skin. So I can be a little bit more fair toned and make this look beautiful, but I can also build this up. I used up an entire one before, like to the pan, to the brim, totally gone. Went through more bronzers for a while and then I was like, you know what? I wanna get this again to see how much I love it. So this has been one in my collection again for at least over a year now and I do still like it. Because I've gotten so many bronzers recently to try, she's been a little off the mindset. So I need to rediscover if I love this again or not, or is she just taking up space? That's kind of what I need to figure out is I'm gonna start doing some testing with like, you know, these other products. And Iconic London. This is like my standby go-to. I use this pretty regularly. Look how big this pan is. It's huge, right? I mean, if we wanna do some comparisons in size here, this is pretty big and I have hit this much pan on it. I use this pretty much every day. If I'm putting on makeup, this is what I'm putting on. I'll put it on my face. I'll use it in the crease of my eye look sometimes on the body. This is a really great formula. The ultimate bronzing powder. This is in light bronze. This is so good. Love, love, love this. Definitely not going anywhere. And you guys, I think we did it. I think we freaking did it. So I have a big declutter pile over here off camera. So we're gonna look at this, but now I need to put back some of these things back into the collection here. So enjoy this fast forward montage while I see now what I've got left. Cause I gotta add some of these back in here too to see how I feel about them. just remembered we still have this I'm gonna hang on to this I actually don't have a lot of face palettes left so I'm gonna hang on to this and see if I use her and if I don't I'm gonna have to put this in an upcoming declutter but now let's look at the things I let's look at let's count up all of the face products I decluttered Okay, you guys, somehow, some way, we have decluttered 20 face products, whether that be a palette, a bronzer, a blush, a highlighter, a single, a duo, a quad, whatever, whatever the things. We have a bunch here, 20, 20 things. Out of this beauty drawer where I can see more of what I wanna try, do I love things? Some stuff that really sparks joy and I'm like, I already know I love this. What else can I shop for in my own collection to see is this worth it or should I declutter that too? I always keep it real with you guys in my faves and fails videos. So definitely stay tuned for those as I rediscover stuff in my own collection, who knew? Sometimes when I declutter, I freak out and I'm like, oh no, I'm letting go of things. But what I'm actually doing is giving myself the courtesy of actually seeing what I have, using what I have, and also giving things away that maybe I'm not using, that I know I'm not using, I know I'm not using, and be able to pass them along and spark joy for other people. So that's always fun. Thank you so much for going through another declutter video with me. I know this one was super duper long, so thank you for hanging out with me. And what do you wanna see next? Should we go to foundations and concealers next? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. And thank you so much again for always allowing a fun sponsor to come on my channel and support the channel, show us some love, give you guys a discount, and thank you so much to Cupsheet for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, friends.